In a recent video, I stood right here, a lay-by next to the A90 north of Aberdeen and did some efficiency testing. I went up and down the road doing 50 and 60 and 70 miles an hour and the results were interesting. Today, we're going to go further. I'm on my way down to Glasgow and we're going to do the trip at two different speeds. Which one's best? Hello again YouTube and welcome back to Just Get A Tesla and today it's going to be an interesting exercise. I'm going to drive to Dundee at 65 miles an hour on autopilot and then we're going to see what the results are and then we're going to set it to truck speed, 55, 56 miles an hour for the remaining leg down to Glasgow. It's not the same road so it's not going to be a directly scientific comparison exactly as it was on the previous one but it's going to be pretty close a lot of people said can you do a longer trip no problem I will do a longer trip I'm also going to make up for the fact that on the previous video I forgot to put all of the metric measures in as well sorry guys haven't been very well we'll put everything in at the end of this video including the metric numbers at 50 60 and 70 miles an hour it's six degrees there is weather coming as i understand it let's get on with it so we're three miles or so uh onto the trip on the a90 uh, aberdeen western peripheral this section is going to be quite hilly so it's already on 295 that's going to keep fluctuating up and down doesn't matter the point is we're on cruise at 65 we're on navigate on autopilot which by the way is practically just dumb autopilot so if you don't have um, enhanced autopilot which gives you this don't worry about it you'll get basically the same results i should probably say i am on chill mode i don't think it makes the slightest bit of difference whether i'm on chill mode or in my case sport mode remember i've got the acceleration boost all that does is mean that it accelerates you slightly harder and regenerates you slightly harder when you slow down but we're not going to be doing an awful lot of delta v changes we're going to be sticking broadly to a speed so chill mode standard mode sport mode i don't think it makes a dramatic difference what i am going to do though and it's a little change to the introduction we're not going to chop it in dundee we're going to go to perth because having had a look at it the uh, broxton park and ride where the uh, tesla supercharger is that is pretty much halfway between where i just was and the tesla center in glasgow where i'm going to end this so we'll go through dundee and we'll go to perth so 65 miles an hour on the way down to uh, perth and then 55 miles an hour for the remaining leg from there and there is a point here it's oh hello it's not giving me auto lane change why is that so we'll have to do it manually and of course because tesla have crippled uh dumb autopilot in the model y juniper uh, you lose cruise control when you disengage auto steer yay no reason at all for doing it other than stupid and no you can't get sexy buttons or anything like that to fix it it doesn't actually do it anyway the point is um that although the run between here and perth and then the run from perth to glasgow isn't the same road so it's not directly a comparison it's the longer journey that people ask for so short of me doing 100 miles or 150 miles on a repeat this is the best way i've got of comparing it so let's keep going as you can see we've got another uh, reasonably steep uphill climb you can see that my energy use is absolutely honking uh, upwards into two point something uh, miles per kilowatt hour which is always fantastic to see but it will calm itself down once we get off the western peripheral and then past Stonehaven the road is much flatter it's a little bit more representative and we'll see how we get on
towards the um, Perth Broxton supercharger. I'm not charging, we're just gonna have this one as the clean brake. I, I've managed to screw the splits up. I really should have split this in Dundee rather than Perth, but hey, what it means is that by the time we actually get parked up, we're gonna have basically 55 miles left to run, and I'm gonna be doing 55 miles an hour. So that does give us a reasonable benchmark as to how the speed part of the efficiency challenge works. 55 miles, are we doing 55? So is it an hour? We'll find out. Um, all I can say is the weather is not helping us. But despite the fact that, as you've seen on some of those montage clips, it's been like this now for quite a while, I still think the efficiency is pretty good. I mean, it's it's only just a touch below four miles per kilowatt hour, which I think is pretty impressive. So let's get to the um, near the supercharger, not actually parked on it, and uh, we'll do the um, changeover bit, and then we'll um, carry on with the second half. Okay, so we have now stopped at uh, Perth, the... Ooh, supercharger is behind me if you can yep see over there a load of those so where are we we have done basically 100 miles and 252.7 what hours per mile which i still think is pretty good considering that it is um, a bit wet and wild now out there so that's pretty good what we're going to do though is reset that now and set it to 55 miles an hour for the remaining uh, trip down into glasgow what I do though want to do before we go any further is give a shout out to today's video sponsor EV Base, who make the fantastic wheel trims that I'm using to protect my wheels. What's fantastic about these is that they have got full edge coverage. I cannot scrape these wheels on the curb as you can with the OEM covers. And there's a fantastic offer on at the moment. It's Black Friday, so if you use my referral code below, there is 26% off store-wide, but on some products, such as these covers, it's actually up to 31% discount, an absolute bargain. Check out EV Base now. Hang on, back up for the electric bus. <laughs> Come on, fella. <laughs> But I'm only doing it because it's electric. If it was diesel, I wouldn't be bothering. No, that's, that's entirely unfair. I was going to say that um, it is a little odd coming into the supercharger site and not charging. Because the only reason why I would come off the roundabout, and I've only gone, what, half a mile off route, but the only reason I would do that is to go and visit the, uh, the supercharger for a uh, quick top off before heading home and obviously this time we haven't had to do so anyway uh, the final leg down into glasgow i'm hoping the weather improves a little bit because um it wasn't fun in places yeah your side of the line please it wasn't much fun in some places so let's hope it clears a little bit and um, gives us a reasonable benchmark now at 55 to compare to the 65 so as we um, head off now down the A9 uh, towards Stirling and Glasgow, I actually think the weather makes a reasonable argument for why going a little bit slower is probably quite sensible because I could already see the cloud base descending. So I'm expecting we're gonna get some limited visibility up ahead. It's raining not particularly hard, but it does in bursts. It really does in bursts. So perhaps going a little bit slower like this, and this is truck speed in the UK, maybe that's not too bad a thing. Obviously my efficiency number to start with is bonkers, but it always is. Whenever you set off after a stop, you burn more energy at the beginning until it actually gets going and then settles into the cruise. We're gonna see that number come down. So 253 was the 65 miles an hour average. I am expecting this in these conditions that it's seven degrees and it's wet, I'm going to estimate somewhere around uh, 210, 220 watt hours per mile. And again, I'll do all of the metric measures for this and for the 50, 60, 70 at the end of the video. So do keep watching. But I, yeah, I, I don't think we're going to get staggering numbers just because of the weather, but it is going to be interesting to compare the difference. Again, this is gentle cruising is the best way i would describe this gentle cruising i've had a few people suggesting that the sweet spot in a tesla might be 40 miles an hour maybe 45 it's just too slow 
is dangerously slow to drive at that kind of speed on the open road. You are going to be holding up traffic like crazy. At least here, I'm going to be keeping up with the trucks. I'll probably end up passing some of the trucks who are restricted, say, to 52, because some of them are. We'll see how we get on. But either way, this is fine at the moment. Oh, and suddenly the cloud is lifting slightly. Good. Let's see how we get on. To the 50 mile an hour section of the uh, M80 on the last run in we're less than uh, five miles now from the um, Tesla Center um, 226 watt hours per mile which is even more than I was um, expecting at the top end but look at the conditions it's absolutely shocking <laughs> and to be perfectly honest I'm doing the speed limit and these guys are going um, barreling down here past me and it just looks like a lake so honestly, I think this is the right way to be going about it anyway. The conditions are not good. Let's put it that way, not good. So, um, okay, we're gonna have burned more power on this than I was expecting, but okay. Anyway, anyway, let's um, keep going in. The nice thing about doing this speed though in these conditions is that you actually are passing traffic for people who are even more cautious than you are i i genuinely i've been in the um, i've been in the right hand lane passing people because they've been doing 50 and i'm doing 55 or at least i was until we hit this section so that's no problem at all i mean look at the amount of spray that's coming off the back uh, with some of these things it's properly wet anyway on the final running now to the supercharger and then um I will plug it in, but we'll do a nice little wrap up -y thing, and I suspect I'm going to need to do some more analysis. Okay, I have um, just pulled up at the uh, supercharger in Glasgow. I've just plugged it in on a cold battery. Well, cold-ish. I haven't preconditioned it to get here so that we can try and have as balanced a view uh, on these numbers as we can. So look, what I'm going to do is put up a nice graphic on the screen next to me that's got all of the different measures on there so we've done 50 55 60 65 and 70 miles an hour over varying distances frank frankly in varying weather so the 221 watt hours per mile that we have just done uh down from perth frankly we should have done better than that i said 210 to 220 and okay we were kind of just on the edge of that but i thought we'd be at the bottom end and ordinarily you really would expect that that would be the case but it's absolutely blatting down and the motorways are like a lake and of course rolling resistance really burns energy resistance being the term and it's exactly the same if you're in a petrol or diesel car of course although some people might not want to accept that but putting the numbers up the variances between the different speeds you can absolutely make a saving you really can by slowing down but I think it's quite difficult to be able to say exactly where the sweet spot is because we haven't really been able to compare like for like on these I have ended up losing a whole load of time sat there so just forget about the how long it took to get here from Perth because I got stuck in horrible traffic in Glasgow and obviously the weather conditions have got a lot worse but for me in my own experience the slower is better thing isn't necessarily so I think an average 50 to 55 miles an hour if you're on a country road single carriageway open road in I don't know America Canada Australia or whatever that's probably quite sensible where you're not setting a particular speed and you're just kind of going with it you're going to have a really 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 efficient journey on a longer motorway freeway highway whatever you want trip the faster you go the more energy you're going to burn but there is a point where there is a bit of a, a tip, tipping spot and for me i almost always cruise at 65 rather than 70 because every additional average mile per hour that you add beyond 60 burns more power 
than it's worth. So I find 60 to 65 for me is kind of the sweet spot. And that's based on traffic as much as anything else. You do find yourself catching up to other vehicles when you're going faster because Although the speed limit in the UK on a motorway might be 70 most of the time, that doesn't mean that you can actually do it. A significant amount of the time, traffic slows down, trucks start racing each other, everything backs up, and then you end up slowing down and speeding up and slowing down and speeding up. And of course, all of that burns more energy. So for me, 50-55 on open roads and 60-65 on highways, freeways, motorways, whatever you want to call it, I think is where I would get to. And here I think is the other tip. And there will be another video to try and prove this, but I am certain that autopilot is less efficient than my right foot, certain. And the reason for that is fairly simple. Autopilot, or even full self-driving, doesn't do a particularly good job at looking a long way ahead, okay? It doesn't do a particularly good job of looking a long way ahead, which means that it's not anticipating quite as much as you might want. And especially where you get gradients. If you set a set speed, it will work really hard to get you over the hill at 65 or whatever it is you set at. And then obviously it's going to be recuperating as you go downhill. What you really need to do is drive an electric car the way that you would do a petrol car if you were trying to drive economically. And that is build some momentum downhill and then release it as you go uphill. Go a little bit faster on the downhill because you're then going to preserve some of that momentum as you go uphill. You can't do that when you're at a set speed. You just can't do that. So even where I've been going on this trip at 65 and then especially at 55, I know I would have been more efficient without being on autopilot. But I have to put autopilot on, otherwise it, it's really difficult to be able to do like for like. I'd love to know your experiences of this and your thoughts. So comments, please, comments. Let's have a debate about this. What speed do you prefer to go at? And don't say the fastest, fine, anyone could do that. Um, and do you quite like to do a little bit of manual driving, especially where there's hills? If it's just flat, no problem. Stick it on cruise because there's nothing to be gained. But as soon as you're into undulations, and let's be honest, there's quite a lot of undulating ground in the UK, then I think it is better if you're driving and not the car. It's just gonna be more efficient if you're remotely competent at doing it that way. So we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I am barreling towards 20,000 subscribers, which is quite exciting. Again, it's the next big milestone. Let's keep going on that one together. And I will see you back here very soon on Just Get a Tesla.